Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to do a get ready with me using my new BK Beauty brushes. They had a sale during Mother's Day and so I picked up a bunch of their brushes that I've been eyeing. So I have two new eye brushes and three new face brushes that I picked up from them. And then I also thought it'd be fun to just do a full face of makeup with you guys. I'm going to try to kind of dupe some of the new Pat McGrath releases, like that new eyeshadow quad that she just came out with. And I'm also going to just try out some new makeup techniques that I've been interested in testing out. And so if you guys are curious about any of this, then just stick around. So to start, let's just run through the brushes that I'll be showcasing in today's video. So this is the BK Beauty 102 brush. This is their largest brush. It's a buffer and foundation brush. This can be used for both powders and creams. So I picked this up kind of as a foundation brush, but also as a powder brush. So we'll try it out both ways today. And then I also picked up their 106 brush, which is their smaller round foundation brush. You can see the difference here in the sizes. So basically the 106 is a smaller version, but it is a lot smaller than the 102. And then I have here their 111 brush. This is their dense bronzer brush. I wanted to pick this up because my current favorite brush for cream and liquid bronzers is actually their 107 brush. So I wanted to compare these two. <laughs> so side by side, they actually look very, very similar. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, let's do a side by side comparison between these two today actually, because honestly, if I was just looking at these, I wouldn't even really know that they're different brushes. Like this is the 111, this is the 107. So, hmm, interesting. And yeah, feeling them, they feel very similar as well. Like the handle length is a little bit different as you guys can see here. So, hmm. Yeah, I'm very curious, a little bit confused. Why are the handles <laughs> different sizes, but the tops look basically the same. So, so yeah, we'll test that out today. See if these guys actually perform differently on the face. And then I picked up the A505 brush. This is from their Angie Hot and Flashy collab. This is a shimmer brush. So we're gonna have to apply this with some mixing liquid today to see how well it works for that. And then I have this teeny tiny 208 brush. This is an angled brush. I honestly thought this would be much bigger because <laughs> so one issue I have right now is I've always kind of wanted a slightly bigger angled brush for eyeliner because I think it would be nice to sometimes have that precision. And this is a little bit smaller than what I anticipated. So we'll see. I have used this once already. I used this yesterday to do that kind of like inner corner, like fox eye effect. And it was actually really good for that. So I want to show that to you guys today and also test this out for overall wing liner and see how it works. So without further ado, let's get into today's makeup look. So to start out, I wanted to try this both for powder and for foundation, but of course, once I put foundation on this, I can't really use it for powder. And so actually I recently saw a makeup video where they first put on translucent powder and then put on foundation. And this was supposed to be really good for oil control. Now I don't have oily skin, my skin's on the normal to dry side, but I thought this would be a good way to try out this brush and that way I can first use it for powder and then then try it out for foundation with you guys. So I have here my By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. Hopefully since this is more of like a hydrating powder, this technique won't end up like drying out my face too much. So I'm just gonna dip this brush in and it's actually a pretty good size. Whew, okay, that just picked up a lot. I always get such a mess whenever I use translucent setting powder. If any of you have any tips, please let me know. But all right, I picked up a decent amount of that, so I'm just gonna sweep this all over my face. And this brush is very large, so as you can tell, it makes very quick work out of face application. Picking up some more for my forehead area. And this is a very soft brush. So for context, I'm someone who actually rarely uses synthetic hair brushes. I'm a huge fan of Japanese Fude brushes. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know I have a lot of content dedicated to Sonia G, Chikahoto, Wayne Goss brushes back when he had brushes. 
so on and so forth. I also have almost all of the rougher brushes, basically all but one of them. So usually on an everyday basis, I'm using my natural hair brushes and I didn't really like synthetic hair brushes before I tried BK Beauty, but I've been very impressed with their line so far and I mostly use their brushes for liquid and cream products and stick to my natural hair brushes for my powder products. So this is actually my first time using a brush specifically just for powder from them. But I have to say, at least upon this initial impression, it's pretty positive. It's very, very soft on the skin and performs really well, as far as I can tell. So that's pretty nice. I do really like how this feels on the skin. And all right, so I think that's probably enough powder for my face. I think that just brought down any shininess from earlier in the day. So far, my skin's not feeling too matte or too dry, which is good. So now let's get into foundation. Today I'm going to use my Pat McGrath Labs foundation. I have this in shade LM13. So I'm just going to squeeze this on the back of my, oops. Oh, yikes. Oh no. Oh, okay. So I guess it's been a little while since I used this. So it was kind of stopped up and in the process of squeezing that it just like squirted all over my room. So I will be back to, I'll be right back to clean that up and yeah, we'll continue the look after all of this is clean. Alrighty, and we're back. So this probably sounds really obvious, but yeah, be careful. If your foundation has any sort of resistance when you're trying to squeeze it out, maybe be very careful because it could squirt everywhere and then get on your dress and your walls and all of your furniture which I apparently learned the hard way today. So let's just continue with today's makeup look. So I have one pump on this side. As you guys can tell, the shade is not exactly my shade match at the moment. It's a little bit deep. This is why I haven't used it in a little while. But let's first go in with the 102 brush on this side. I'm gonna use the 106 for the other side of my face just so I can kind of see side by side what the experience is like. So this is quite a fluffy brush. It's a lot fluffier than what I would normally use for liquid foundation. But because it is so big, it is making quick work of this. I do think it's having a little trouble blending in right around my nose. I'm having to go over that a few times, but other than that, it's going pretty well. But yeah, I think given the size, I do think most likely in the future, I probably wouldn't really use this much for foundation and probably more so as a powder brush. So let me actually bring you guys closer. So here we have the foundation on this side of my face and then nothing on this side. So you can see that with just one pump of this foundation, the coverage is not that high, but the finish is quite natural. And I think definitely having that powder on underneath made it a bit more matte than it normally is. It usually has a little bit more of a kind of natural satin glow to it. So let's add one more pump on this side and then we'll do the other side, just so you guys can see how this works with a little bit more coverage. I do think though, if you wanted a super fast everyday foundation application, especially if you use more of a cream foundation, you might like this brush for that. For me, I feel like with this liquid foundation, it's just a little bit too big for my taste in terms of application, but it's doing a good job, so no complaints. So there we have two pumps on this side and nothing on this side. So now let's go in on the other side of my face with this little 106 brush. So yeah, this size I think is a little bit more my jam. So one thing I wanted to do was kind of compare this with the BK Beauty 101 brush, which is my current favorite foundation brush. And these do have a very different application experience. So these bristles feel a lot more lengthy in comparison to this. So this is more of that kind of like stamping motion, whereas I feel like with the 106, I'm doing more of a sweeping motion on the face. To put them side by side, you can see the bristle hair is kind of similar, but this one is a lot 
smaller than the BK Beauty 101. It's also a lot smaller in cross section. And this one just in general feels a little bit more loosely bound. So if you like to apply your foundation more in a stippling motion like this, I think this 101 brush might be a little bit better. But if you like that kind of fluidity to go like this and sort of sweep it around your face, then this 106 might be better. So just to even things out, I'm gonna do one more pump of foundation. I do feel like I'm looking very orangey today. So this is why I hadn't used the Pat McGrath foundation for a while because this is very much my summer shade. And I thought since, you know, the sun's been coming out more, I would be kind of closer to this, but I guess I'm still kind of in the transitional season in terms of my skin tone. So let's bring this down the neck because I feel like my neck looks kind of a few shades lighter and less warm than this foundation. And today I'm applying definitely anything more foundation than I would normally, just because I wanted to really showcase these brushes for you guys. Usually I think with this foundation, maybe two to three pumps over the whole face would be plenty. But as you can see, it does build very nicely. And on top of that powder, I feel like it feels much more set than it normally would at this point. Alrighty, so here we have the foundation on both sides, and I think both brushes did a really good job with quick application without any streakiness. And for me, what I really like about these brushes as well is because they're synthetic hair, it's just easier for me to wash because you can see after you use them, they do get kind of dirty. And so I usually wash my brushes every time after I use them with foundation or concealer. And so far I've had really good experiences with the BK Beauty ones. So I went off camera to do my brows and primer. So now I'm gonna blend in my concealer with my BK Beauty A506 brush. This is also from the Angie Hot and Flashy collab. This is currently my favorite concealer brush as well. So BK Beauty is really killing it in the liquid makeup product category for me. And I have on today my Dior Forever Skin Correct, which is also my current favorite concealer. It is interesting applying all of this on top of powder because I feel like definitely everything's kind of sticking a little bit more than it would normally. So this is gonna be really interesting when we get to the cream bronzer portion. Hopefully that still blends out seamlessly. I think that's the one downside of this kind of makeup technique. By doing the powder first, everything is just a lot more set as you're applying it. And as a side note, if any of you have any tips on how to get foundation or concealer out of clothing, please let me know because I went off camera to try to remove some of these stains and they're really not budging, which is honestly a little bit concerning because I put this stuff directly on my skin, but yeah, I guess it definitely is long wear. So now for the bronzer portion. I am so curious about the difference between these two bronzers. So let me first go in on this side of my face with the, hmm, this is the bad side of my face, so. I'll try it with the new brush. Why not give it a challenge? So this is my LYS bronzer in Harmony. So this is a very creamy, emollient, easy to blend out bronzer. So I know that for sure. So let's see with this new technique and with this new brush, how it fares and how it differs from the other brush. So yeah, it does feel very similar to the 107, maybe just slightly less wispy. I don't know, it'd be interesting to compare directly. In terms of how the bronzer's blending out, it's definitely a little bit more resistance than I normally experience with this bronzer, and so that must just be from the powder that's underneath everything. It's still blending in beautifully, as you can see, but I do feel like I'm applying a bit more pressure than I normally would, but still super, super easy. So here we have the LYS on this side, and then nothing on this side. So now let's do the same thing on this side of my face. Ooh, that was a little bit much. This is very creamy, so you have to be a little bit careful not to apply too much of it. And here we have my 107 brush. Okay, yeah, so this one definitely is a bit wispier, I would say, than the 10 or the 111 brush. So the 111 brush is a bit denser, this one, 
has kind of longer, I don't know, actually, I guess it's not actually longer based on that comparison earlier, but it feels like there's more movement, so maybe it's just less tightly bound in comparison to the 111. I'll definitely have to use the 111 more to see if I like it more or less than this one. Like I said, this one is my current favorite and for me was really a game-changing brush. But I think both of them did a really good job today. So here we have the 107 side and here we have the 111 side with the caveat that the 111 side is my bad cheek. Yeah, very interesting. They just look so similar. Like if I look super closely at them, I can tell that I think the 111 has maybe just a little bit more thickness in the ferrule. So I think maybe there's just more bristles than the 107, but they're basically about the same in terms of shape and size. And then to contour my nose today, let me actually see if I can use this 106 brush with a little bit of that LYS bronzer. I usually go in with my 112 brush from BK Beauty. That's this guy over here, which I would recommend for this use case, but I think this 506 is also doing a really good job. So for blush, I have a few candidates on my desk today, but I'm gonna hold off until after we do the eyeshadow look, just cause I wanna make sure those two match. So for today's eyeshadow look, as I mentioned at the top, I wanna try to dupe this Luxe Eyeshadow Quad Passion Fleur that is coming out soon from Pat McGrath. So for context, in case you're new to my channel, Pat McGrath is my favorite makeup brand. I have most of her eyeshadows, all of her motherships, and a lot of her smaller eyeshadows as well. And so I don't think I'll pick this up, but I wanted to do a look that was kind of similar to it, both so I can kind of decide whether I want to actually pick this up and also just to kind of alleviate some of my FOMO. So unfortunately on her website right now, she only has the picture of the quad itself and not of specific swatches. And so I don't have a ton of information to go off of, but I took out a few of my palettes that it reminded me of. So first off, it reminds me actually a lot of this voyeuristic Vixen quad. So of course this is in black packaging. This new one is in pink. And I think the new one overall seems to have like a cooler color story to this, but it's a very similar layout. Like you have this light shimmer shade. That's kind of a skin show shade. The new one looks like it has almost like a lilac pink undertone to it. And then this shade here actually looks really similar. So I plan on using this in today's look. This one does have a very strong yellow flip to it. So the new one might just have a very different flip. And then this shade over here, this bronze shade also looks kind of similar. The one in Voyeuristic Vixen is already quite cool toned. So I think this is a decent comparison. And then the shade over here is a little bit more brownish red, I would say in this palette, whereas it looks to be much more of kind of a purpley shade in this new palette. And so the other palette I actually thought of was this mini love story from Natasha Denona. I'm gonna use this matte in today's look because I think this looks a lot more similar. This one over here actually looks really similar to that fiery shade as well. So that's another possibility there. I also took out Utopian Dream from Pat McGrath. This shade over here kind of also reminds me of the fiery shade. This one has less of a yellow flip, so it might actually be more similar. And then for the lightest shade, I thought of this one in Divine Rose 2. It has a bit of a pink flip to it. So just to swatch all of those for you guys, let me show you what they look like. So this is the Skin Show shade. And don't mind this little scar here. I burnt myself on a pot. And for comparisons, let me just actually also swatch this one from Mini Love Story just to see. Okay, this one actually might be an even better dupe. It has, I think, a little bit more pinkiness to it. So let's actually go in with this. In general, the looks I've seen from her so far using this new quad look a lot like Mini Love Story looks. And then let's also just go into this shade for the deeper shade. And then for Rose Fire Glow, let's swatch the candidates. So we have this one from the Mini Love Story. This one has a pretty strong shift to kind of an orangey bronze. Then we have this one from Voyeuristic Vixen. My guess is that the texture will be more similar to this one. It's very flaky, very high shine. 
but as you can see, a bit warmer. And then we have this one from Utopian Dream, a little bit more metallic. This one doesn't really have that same shift that the others do. So we'll have to see which one I end up using. I'm kind of still torn between these three. And then for the last shade, I'll be going in with this one over here. So this is kind of my attempt at duping with my existing collection, this new release. Let's see how these shades look on the eyes. So for this eye look, I'm gonna first actually try going in with this blending brush that I got in a recent Ipsy bag. This is a synthetic brush. It's not really a brand that I've heard of before, but let's give it a shot. So this shade by itself is a little bit tricky to blend out. So I'm actually gonna first go into this shade. I know this is kind of cheating a little bit because the Pat McGrath palette doesn't have this many mattes, but hopefully the combination of the two still gives you kind of a general sense of the look. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of how this brush is performing. Ugh. Every time I get these brushes from Ipsy, I try them just to give them a chance because you never know, they've maybe improved the quality of these kinds of brushes, but especially for eyeshadow, I feel like it's really hard for me to deviate from my natural hair Fude brushes. I mean, this one's not terrible. I, it's definitely doing its job, but just not quite at the level I normally have come to expect. And with that same brush, let's just take some of that deeper shade. Hopefully it can help blend this out. The shade is a little tricky to work out. Okay, calling in reinforcements. I'm going in with my classic crease from Sonia G. Yeah, much better. There's just a little bit more stiffness that you get with these Fude brushes that I think is very helpful for blending out deeper shadows because deeper shadows definitely have a tendency to stick and be a little bit patchy. So if you want that nice gradient effect, it does take a little bit of elbow grease unless you have enough stiffness in the brush. And that's something that kind of surprised me when I first got Fude because I thought the point was to just have super soft brushes, but you do actually want that firmness, that's actually one of the major advantages of using a natural hairbrush. It does have a bit more firmness in comparison to the synthetics. Okay, so the blend could still definitely use some work, but we'll return to that later. Now I'm gonna go into this other brush from that same little set, and I'm going to do a similar thing on my lower lash line. So first with that lighter purple shade. And note that I have not set my concealer today. I'm totally just relying on the powder that I put on earlier and then taking some of that deeper shade. This brush actually isn't terrible for the lower lash line, a little bit chunky, but gets the job done. So now for the shimmers, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually first go in with this shade from Utopian Dream and kind of put it all over the lid. And then I'm going to go into that really flaky shade from Voyeuristic Vixen and put a bit of it on top in the center. Again, I know that technically this should just be one shade, but I feel like the best way I can emulate it is actually through this mixing and matching. And also this will give me a chance to test out that brush with mixing liquid. And actually speaking of that, maybe I should not have done this with my finger. Let me actually grab that A507 brush and take a little bit more of the shade here. Okay, it is a little bit firm, I think, used just by itself like this, but I'll see how it works with the mixing liquid. My main goal with getting this brush is the other BK Beauty brush I got for eyeshadow is their 203 brush. And this one is just a little bit too fluffy to use with mixing liquid. It has a tendency to just absorb the mixing liquid a lot. So I thought with this one, because it's a lot more skinny, it's not really gonna absorb the product. So hopefully that works well. Cause for me, the main motivation of getting these synthetic brushes is to be able to use them with liquids. So I have now a tiny bit of my Mehran mixing liquid 
on a plate here. So I'm gonna first go in actually with this BK Beauty brush and try to take as much of this shadow as I can on the brush just so I don't have to dip in later when it's wet. And this is a very flaky shadow. I love this palette, but would highly, highly recommend using it with mixing liquid. So then I'm just going to take this with the mixing liquid, kind of mix it together, make a little bit of a paste. Hopefully that's enough. It's always a little bit of a gamble. And then because I have that bronze shade later, I'm just gonna kind of put this on the center of the eye here. Ooh, I think that's pretty. Ooh. Okay, actually I'm gonna put this on the inner third as well. I feel like I picked up more mixing liquid than eyeshadow. So as much as I hate going in with this wet, I am just gonna take a little bit of that again. Kind of sprinkle it throughout. Try to get it to mesh with that other eyeshadow. Hopefully you guys can see it just adds a bit more of a fiery effect to the lids. And I do think this brush is working a lot better for this use case than the other BK Beauty brush. And now just going in with this shade over here, I'm going to use this to kind of ease that blend into the matte shade. Ooh, this is such a pretty shade. I really should use this shade more as well. Usually whenever I open this palette, I'm just so tempted by this shade over here. I always forget this one because it's, you know, a little bit more neutral, a little bit less eye-catching, but it is such a pretty shade. Wow. So I'm just taking now my brush to clean all of this up a bit. And now for the lower lash line, I'm going to try to emulate what I did up top. So using that same BK Beauty brush, I'm going into this shade and just sweeping this along the lower lash line. The brush is still a little bit wet. It's a little bit pointy, I would say, to use for the lower lash line. So in the future, I'd probably use a different brush, but it does give you some nice precision if that's what you're going for. And then same thing with this shadow, just kind of going on top. And then finally with this shadow, just connecting all of that together. And now finally for the light shade, I'm going in with my BK Beauty 205 brush. And this is actually specifically designed for brow bone highlight, which is kind of interesting. Ooh, okay. Put a little bit too much there. Let's use whatever's left in the inner corner and then try to judge this out. I've never had a brush specifically just for brow bone highlight, but as you can see, it does a pretty good job actually. It's very perfectly shaped for this part of the face. Trying to get a little bit more just in the inner corners as well. This is a pretty bright highlight actually, less pink than I thought it would be. Alrighty, so here we have the completed eyeshadow look. So I'm gonna go off camera, do some eyeliner, and then be back to finish off this look. So I did one eye off camera because I'm not that good at eyeliner on camera, but I'll try to replicate this for you guys. I don't really think this is quite what I was going for, but we'll see if I can do better on the other side. So basically what I'm trying to do today is go in with this little angled brush and some black eyeshadow and do that sort of technique if you guys have seen it on Instagram for hooded eyes where you basically first kind of map out where you want it to go like this where you kind of keep your eyes open sort of draw a line down from the edge of your eye going towards your eyebrow so yeah that's not the best line but <laughs> this is kind of the first time I'm trying out this technique so there's kind of the line, I guess. And then you sort of connect it to where your bag sort of, your eye bag kind of starts. Like, I don't know. I haven't really figured out how to make this technique work for me, but I'm gonna try to create a little wing here. So you have your little wing going. And then you kind of try to connect it the rest of the way down. Now this is a lot steeper than what I normally have for eyeliner. I feel like usually my eyeliner just kind of goes outward like this way instead of straight up like that. But hey, we're trying it. So let's see how this goes. 
I will say though, this brush is very good. I've liked it so far, even though this technique may be less so. I'll try to draw that in. Okay, yeah, so it's looking a little bit crazy, but these are kind of my rough guidelines at the moment. And the idea is supposed to be when you like open your eyes like this, it looks good. And then when you close it, it also looks okay. Usually when I've seen people do it, there's a little bit more of kind of like a tiered step here, whereas mine's just kind of straight. So I definitely did something wrong. I don't know, if you guys know how to do this technique well, please let me know. But I'll try to fix this as much as possible with my liquid liner. Now, what I really wanted to show you guys with this little guy over here is actually for that inner corner area. So hopefully it goes as well today as it went the other day, basically. Just try to create a tiny little triangle here. Give yourself that kind of foxy look. Just extend it a little bit. And I feel like this brush is really good for this because it's just so tiny. So yeah, you guys tell me how you think I look with that little elongated tail. Probably doesn't look that great, but trust me, it looks a lot better than the last time I tried it before I had this brush. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go off camera, try to fix this up, and then we can get into blush and lips. Alrighty, so here we have the finished eye look. This was quite the ordeal. This side is very uneven compared to this side, and so I tried to kind of disguise that by adding a lot more of that purple eyeshadow and also some more black eyeshadow. So now I feel like the look is definitely a lot more smoky than what this new Pat McGrath quad is, but Hopefully at least my eyes look less uneven. I think I'm gonna have to practice that technique a lot more in order to get it down, but at least thus far I've liked the little angled brush. I think it has been helpful in at least giving me a little bit more precision. Though I will say I also need to work on this inner corner stuff because I feel like this side is a lot sharper than this side, so again, it's just hard to get the two sides looking even. But now let's get into some blush. So I think for today, I'm gonna to keep it simple and just go in with Rosé and Brunch from Danessa Myricks and my BK Beauty 109 brush. This is my favorite brush for cream and liquid blushes. And as you can see, I picked up a lot of blush there, but it's been a little while since I've used this blush and it's one of my favorites of all of the new releases. And so since the rest of this look has been a little bit complicated, let's just keep it super simple and easy for this part. A little bit of it on the nose too, just to have that cute kind of sunburnt effect. And now for the lips, I wanted to do something a little bit special. So I have here my new LYS lip pencil, and I'm gonna try to do kind of like a gradient effect. So I'm actually going to put this in the center of my lips instead of on the edges. So let's see how this looks. So I'm just gonna kind of sweep this in the middle of my lips like that. This is quite pigmented, so I'm just gonna start with that for now. And then going in with my Dior Lip Oil, which is mostly clear, has a little bit of tint to it, as you guys can see. Alrighty, so has a little bit of the gradient effect. I think maybe the lip liner is a little bit too pigmented, so it did kind of bleed, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it giving you kind of a bit of a gradient lip. Let me try to smudge the edges at least. Okay, sort of. I don't know. I don't know if it just looks patchy and messy or if it looks cute. Hmm. Definitely different from my normal look at least. So zooming you guys out, here we have the final look. What do you guys think? On the whole, I'm really glad that this actually pulled together because this was a fun but also slightly stressful video to film because I was using so many new brushes and new techniques that, you know, not everything was going quite the way I had anticipated, especially with the foundation spraying everywhere. 
and and the eyeliner just going really wonky but i think it's actually a pretty nice look overall let me actually turn down the brightness just a little bit so you guys can hopefully see it a little bit better so in terms of my overall initial impressions for the brushes i really enjoyed all of them they're all really easy to use i would say for the 105 brush i'm probably going to use this mainly for powder in the future Will I use this kind of technique of kind of underpainting powder? I don't know, that's a little bit still TBD at the moment. I wanna see how the makeup wears over the day. In terms of makeup application experience, I would definitely say putting the powder on underneath makes it a less pleasant experience in terms of applying everything, just cause it's sort of like applying creams on top of already set foundation it kind of has that sort of drag and so i didn't really enjoy it from that perspective but if this does make my makeup last a lot longer then i might still try out this technique especially on hot summer days but if you are someone who likes that technique, this brush is really perfect for that kind of all over powder application. In terms of the 106 brush, I actually really enjoyed this today for the foundation. I think it did a really good job. It was really quick and easy. I'll have to continue comparing this with my 101, which is my current favorite, but so far really good. And actually I'm realizing now I meant to use this for blush as well. So let me actually try Try. Just taking a little bit because I know we already have quite a bit of blush on. Just out of curiosity, let's see how this works as well. Okay, I think this is actually quite nice also for blush application. It's a really perfect size for that cheek area. Now the 109 brush is really special to me, so I can't really say how this compares to that yet. But so far this seems like a really nice versatile brush. I have a similar first impression for the 111 brush. Really, really good job today. How it compares to the 107, the jury's still a little bit out, but it did a really great job. And honestly, I think if you replace my 107 with my 111, it would take me a little bit of time to realize that because they're just such similar brushes. It honestly surprises me a lot that she has these two brushes in her collection because at least for me, I use them for the same purpose. For the eye brushes, I would say I liked but didn't necessarily love the shimmer brush, the 505. It was fine for today's use case, but I didn't feel like it particularly applied a really nice layer of shimmer. I still think a finger application would have been better. So from that standpoint, it's just okay. It is quite stiff and I think for the size of my eyes, a little bit large, but there's also nothing particularly wrong with it. Now the 208, even though technically this one led me astray on my eyeliner, I actually really enjoy, specifically for that little inner corner flick. Again, I know my inner corner flick doesn't look as beautiful and professional as some people's, but you have to understand I've never been able to do one that looks remotely this good, and this one made it super, super easy. So from that standpoint, I really like this. For the rest of the eyeliner, Jury's still out. It's also definitely my fault that I am new to this technique, but for today's look, I don't think it did a particularly good job. For the other products on my face, I do kind of wish that I had used a less warm toned foundation for today. As much as I love this one, I think that in person, it just makes the look a little bit less cohesive because my skin just looks really kind of yellowy orange in comparison to the pinky purple makeup. And so in hindsight, I probably should have picked one of my more neutral toned foundations, but otherwise I think it's looking pretty good. And on camera, I'm not having this issue of thinking it looks too warm, but definitely in person, it looks a lot warmer. All the other products I think though look really nice in today's look. The formulas are impeccable. The performance is really lovely. And this gradient lip is actually growing on me. So I'm glad I tried it out today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of new brushes and new makeup techniques. If you guys have any thoughts about BK Beauty brushes or synthetic hair brushes, please let me know. And also if you have any thoughts about these makeup techniques, I would love to hear your thoughts as well. I know I'm not like a professional makeup artist showing you guys these techniques, but hopefully this gives you an impression of 
what it's like for a makeup novice to try these sorts of trendy techniques. But especially for the eyeliner, if you guys have any helpful tips, please let me know. Because as hard as I tried today, I think it did not look that good. And before I forget, also let me know what you think about this upcoming Pat McGrath release. I'm honestly really on the fence as to whether I'll pick up anything. And I'm actually not sure if this video is going to come up before or after that release, but I don't think I'll pick up the eyeshadow palette because this sort of look is not really one that I go for a lot and is precisely the reason why I don't actually get that much use out of this mini love story. In terms of the cream blushes that are coming out, those are definitely of more interest to me, but the packaging looks really cheap and so I might wait for review on that one and see which ones people like and just pick one shade. But let me know what you guys think and if you guys would be interested in a review. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.